it's Lynn and Aaron with Traveling Flamingo, and today we are on Harvest Key in Belize, which is a private island owned by Norwegian Cruise Lines, and we want to show you what you need to know and what you can expect when you dock here on your Norwegian cruise. At the end, we're also going to share with you some details we wish we had known about before our day at Harvest Key. <laughs> So Harvest Key is a $50 million island that was purposely built for Norwegian Cruise Lines and it serves both Norwegian Cruise Lines and its other sub-brands which is Seven Regions and Oceana Cruises. There is a second NCL island that they own and that's Great Stirrup Key, however we're specifically going to talk about Harvest Key in Belize. There's quite a lot to do here. There is a beach that's about 7 acres with about 3,000 lounge chairs and a reserved area for kayaking, stand-up paddle boarding and that's protected from a bunch of the open ocean. And there's also a lot to do here. There are lots of activities to choose from, and many are listed in the excursions on NCL's website, and some of them are free and some do cost some money. There's also a ferry that goes between the main island and Harvest Key, so if you want to get off the island, you there is a ferry that you can choose to go on and do that. So very much like Costa Maya, this is a, an island that is built for cruise passengers. So everything here is for the entertainment of cruise passengers. And it's not really like you're in Belize. So again, if you do want to get off and go to the main island, there are excursions that do that. And there's also a ferry that you can take. However, what's nice about this island is there's a commitment to, sort, to supporting the local Belize economy. So many of the buildings and materials are locally sourced and many of the stores and shops here are local and you know you will get your usual brands like del sol where you get everywhere harley davidson's jimmy buffett's land shark you know a bunch of those types of things however there is a commitment to local workers they do talk about the history of the island uh, and the history of belize so it, it has a nice uh it, it does have sort of a nice area there where you can get local uh, locally made crafts. So this is the third video in our cruise Caribbean cruise port playlist If you are interested in seeing more we also have Costa Maya and Roatan Honduras If you're interested in those we will also be adding uh, Cozumel shortly so feel free to check out the playlist above so they've really thought of everything. So when you arrive, you will, there's a long dock, which is nice so you don't have to tender. And they've covered the entire dock. So you don't have to worry about being in the sun, rain, or whatever the weather is when you're there walking down that dock because it's completely covered. They do also have golf carts. So if you need assistance getting down the dock and to the island, that's there for you as well. So once you get off the ship, there is a number of activities here. There's activities both on the island itself and off the island. So for instance, off the island excursions include things like exploring some Mayan ruins and a spice farm. There's chocolate making and fishing and other sorts of little boat cruises around the island. There's also excursions on the island for those who want to add some additional activities to your sunbathing. So for instance, there's luxury beach villas, stand up paddle boarding, kayaking, paddle boats, parasailing, and a high ropes course. There's also a zip line called the Flight House, where you can zip line 3,000 feet from one point on the island all the way across where everyone swims, uh, and that's 136 feet above the water, they say. And that was closed when we were there, so we don't have any video of that, but we can show you the area. And you can also book ahead of time for all of these, uh, and you can also pay when you get there. However, it's you know best to pay in advance just in case those excursions sell out. In addition to that, there's also a nice pool area that is uh, available to you. So if you don't want to go in the ocean there, there is this huge pool area, and they do also have a swim up bar in that pool. What we decided to do was we got some sun by the pool, we enjoyed the pool a little bit. We also did stand up paddle boarding and then we went into the beach, into the water and swam around in the ocean. Yeah, I really liked how big the pool was and a note for families that there are lifeguards out there at the pool and they're pretty on it. There were some kids sort of roughhousing and nope, they shut that down right away and you know, there's no diving. So they really wanted to make sure that everybody there was being safe and enjoying their time. I really enjoyed the paddle boarding. It is in like a little lagoon area. So as Aaron said, you are protected from the ocean. It's not very wavy, but there is wildlife in there. So there are jellyfish. If you've never been paddle boarding before, may or may not be the place you want to try learning it. But as Aaron said, they have the kayaks and other activities there. But I really enjoyed that part of the day. 
So now on to food and dining that's available to you on the island. There are several restaurants here, including Land Sharks, which is affiliated with Dip Jimmy Buffett's. And this is where we sat down and had a nice lunch. And there's a nice view of either the pool area or the ocean. There's another bar near the water activities that does have a different food options than Jimmy Buffett's. It's slightly limited, but it's shaded and it might be actually none of the restaurants are really all that busy. So it's there as well. And there are bars around the pool and near the beach. So if you're looking to get a drink near where you are, you can do that. As well as in the main shopping area, there's a lot of places that are selling um, alcoholic beverages and beverages out there. And we enjoyed a delicious fresh coconut. It was such a hot day. And they cut a coconut, drink it right out the coconut. And then they cut up the, the fleshy part for you to eat too. It was absolutely delicious. So from a shopping perspective, there are lots of little tourist shops that are uh, run by people from Belize. Uh, however, there's not sort of as many good sales on shirts and sort of other uh, merchandise that you might want from the island. Uh, there is a little bit of, of uh, repetition when it comes to the stuff that people have. And again, there are the larger like Del Souls and stuff. So those are pretty standard in terms of pricing. I would say that uh, some of your other islands that are a little bit more uh, in the actual city centers will give you better deals than, than this island, for instance. This does have a lot of your typical cruise shops like your jewelry stores, your Diamonds International, your Duty Free. Uh, but they do also have some of those more authentic, uh, homegrown, you know, handmade stores, which is very nice. Uh, and you can definitely find some really unique stuff in this island. If you're simply looking, though, for sort of sales or deals, uh, you're probably not going to find much here at this island specifically, but you will find some unique stuff. So some specifics about the island, even though it is owned by Norwegian, you cannot use your crew cruise cards here. So you do need to remember to bring cash or credit as you know, it's, it's not the ship. You cannot pay with your cruise card. This also accounts for your unlimited drink packages. So it doesn't work on the island. You're going to need to pay in addition for any of the beverages that you want to have. And food is not included either. So you are going to want to make sure you bring money. And maybe that's why the restaurants were pretty quiet is people were going back onto the ship to eat rather than paying additional for food on the island. They do have lockers both at the water activities and by the pool, which do require a deposit. But it is, it's, you pay a deposit and you can use it all day. So we found that helpful uh, bringing that we bring our cameras and stuff with us that we could lock them up while we were doing the water sports. And then if we moved over to the pool, we could lock them up over there as well. The lounge chairs are free, but if you want the cabanas where it's covered, you are going to have to pay an additional charge. So a few tips and things that we wish we knew before we went to this island. The You will probably want to bring water shoes because the sand isn't quite like a fine sand. It's a bit rocky. And again, there is wildlife. Some people on the island uh, next to us in the water had actually stepped on a conch shell. So, you know, it's not uh, necessarily a groomed beach per se. And the sand is kind of rough. So we would suggest bringing uh, water shoes. There is smoking all over the place, which is sort of unfortunate. There's lots of signs that say you're not allowed to smoke, but we noticed this specifically with Norwegian. No one seems to follow that, so there does wind up being smoking on the island. Near us, there was two people with cigars and like two or three people with cigarettes, and it was frustrating because we're right in front of the sign that says no smoking, but it, they seem to be very loose on that policy. Uh, if you keep walking when you get off of the cruise ship and you keep going past sort of the, the everybody seems to always take the chairs that are closest to where you get off for the ship. So if you keep going, there's some really nice quiet areas and you get this really beautiful view because it's a bit of a horseshoe, the island or a crescent. You get a really nice view of the ship looking back and uh, we would suggest that you go to a little bit more of a quiet area there. So another tip, if you're planning on enjoying drinks while you're on the island, they're actually cheaper back in the main shopping area. So if you're okay to walk an extra few steps, that's where I went to get my drink. Um, I'm pretty cheap. <laughs> so also it gets really busy by the pool area. So if you do want to seat in the shade by the pool, you are going to want to get off pretty early within the first hour. We got off within, a hunt, uh, within 30 minutes of being docked and within the hour, all the shady seats were gone. Also, it does get a lot quieter after lunch. So if you're not planning on being there for the full day, that's also an option to maybe enjoy the ship in the morning, have your breakfast there, and then get off and enjoy the, enjoy the island in the afternoon. 
So overall, we enjoyed this island. This is a good island to relax on. You know, some of these islands you look at, you wonder, hey, do you want to go out and sort of, you know, pay for an excursion to a resort where you can hang out at the beach? Or do you want to go on like a Mayan excursion? The nice thing here is, although they do have the Mayan excursions and so forth, this is a great opportunity to just go and enjoy the sun, enjoy the beach, and relax. And everything here is sort of tailored towards that, which I think is great. And that's exactly what you get out of this island. So you hands down, probably the best island to do that at. We really enjoyed our time here. You can make it what you want. They've got stand-up paddle boarding. They do have stuff like the Mayan ruins and the chocolate tours. However, you know, for us, we felt you could do a lot of those things on some of the other islands. This island was for relaxation and for, you know, some water sports and zip lining and all that sort of fun stuff that you, you may or may not want to do on other islands. And since this is run by Norwegian, you know, it's up to, you know, presumably safety, safety safety standards that Norwegian's going to have to support. So, you know, we felt very comfortable doing a lot of those things here. And we would definitely go back. You know, we the staff was very friendly. Uh, the pool was great. The food was great. The drinks were overpriced, but you get that everywhere. Uh, you know, a lot of great options. A great place to just to just relax and and have have some nice, you know, R&R. &R. So we just want to take a minute and thank some people who had commented on our Costa Maya video. We really appreciate when people add comments at the bottom and really enjoy being part of the YouTube community. So thank you to BookGirl101 and Doc13091, as well as Tammy Winter had a great suggestion if you're going to Costa Maya, that right from the cruise port you can take a bus for just a couple of dollars. It's only about a 10 minute ride and it takes you into the city where there's beach and some good bargains and some nice food. So that's another option if you're going to Costa Maya. So we hope you enjoyed our video. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. If you could hit that like and subscribe button, that would mean a whole lot to us. So we hope that you enjoy your trips coming up and happy travels.